This is the new Husqvarna 540 IXP battery powered chainsaw. This is the newest addition to their battery powered lineup and to their uh, professional chainsaw lineup. And uh, if, if you're familiar with Husqvarna, if you follow anything um, with them, uh, they've really been talking about this saw for a long time now. It was finally available to dealers and, of course, then to consumers in the fall of 2020. They're out and about. They're in the field. Uh, there's not only this one here. There's also the top handle version, the T540i XP, which is basically the same saw as far as the internal components and that kind of stuff. But it doesn't have the rear handle on it. It has the top handle because it's a, an arborist saw for, uh, you know, taking up the tree and stuff. So the, the big thing about this, why they're so excited about this and why they've really been um, promoting this saw and making sure everybody knows it's out there is because this is supposed to have the same power output as a 40cc gas powered chainsaw. Now, there's a little bit you need to know about that, and um, one of the things you need to know is you have to use certain types of batteries to get that power output. Um, you have to use either the BLI 200X or the BLI 300 battery. You can use the BLI 200 in it. You can use any of the gray batteries in it, and it'll work. It just won't have that, that same power output as a 40cc gas-powered chainsaw. What you cannot use in it at all are the orange batteries, and this would be um, what we call an orange battery here. Uh, you can see the bottom part of it is orange. That would be your BLI-20, BLI-22, and BLI-30 batteries, your, uh, your consumer product batteries. But again, any of the gray batteries from Husqvarna will work in this saw because they are the professional uh, batteries and they're made for the professional equipment. So, oh uh, boy, um, <clears throat> there's a lot to talk about with this chainsaw. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Um, it's, it's not all good, it's not all bad, but there is a lot to talk about. Uh, start with the fact that this one here is ours and we've got to run it quite a bit now. So we are a bit more familiar with it and, um, you know, wanted to make sure that we, we tried it and some of the stuff we ran into wasn't just a fluke. And um, we'll get into all that stuff later on. Um, being that there is a lot to talk about with this chainsaw, uh, we're going to split this up into multiple videos. That way you're not stuck just sitting through one long ass boring video trying to pay attention to everything, um, you know. So we're going to start out with um, just kind of introducing you to this saw here and, uh, and some of the features and, and benefits of it and give you an idea of why it might be something that would be a, a good investment for you. So um, we'll start out with the fact that this one here, again, this is ours. We have the 16 inch bar on it. You can actually get the, uh, you can get your choice of either a 14 inch bar or a 16 inch bar on this saw. The top handle version, the T540i XP, that comes in either a 12 inch, 14 or 16 inch bar. And if you remember for, for as long as they've had the, um, the commercial battery powered products available from Husqvarna, it was you just buy the, the piece of equipment and then you'd have to buy the battery separate, you'd buy the charger separate, you know, there was no package deal on any of that. With the introduction of these uh, new saws, the 540i XP and the T540i XP, they started to create the, um, the battery powered kits um, with these pieces of equipment so you can get uh, this saw, the 540i XP, and either a 14 inch bar or a 16 inch bar along with two batteries and a charger and I think it comes in a handy little bag to keep everything in for, for one package price. And the T540i XP would be the same thing, you can get it with the saw, um, a couple batteries, a charger, and your choice of the 12 inch, 14 inch, or 16 inch bar in a kit for one set price. And when you buy the stuff in a kit, it is a pretty good savings over buying everything individually. So that's one uh, one new benefit um, that comes along with these new saws. Now the rest of them all pertain to the saws themselves. So uh, we'll start showing you some of them. And we'll start here with the, uh, the uh, control area here because that's definitely a big difference from what you've seen before on the Husqvarna handheld equipment. So for our controls on the 540i XP, let's start up here at the front with the one that everybody should know, and that is the chain brake. If you don't know how this works, 
or what it's for, you shouldn't be operating a chainsaw. But we're going to go through it anyway, just for anybody out there that doesn't know. The whole point of this is to prevent you as much as possible from getting injured in the event that the saw kicks back and comes flying towards you. So with this in the forward position, which it is right now, your chain can't move. When you pull this back, now your chain is free to spin. You accelerate the saw, give it throttle, and that starts your chain spinning and you're ready to cut through wood. So you're holding this like this, your hand is on this top handle, and you hit something or the saw gets pinched and somehow um, kicks back. When it kicks back, this will hit your, your wrist, which will push that forward, which instantly locks up the chain, keeps it from spinning to minimize any damage that it can cause to you or any objects that it comes in contact with as it's being thrown back towards you. So chain break right up here, and you can tell that this is on or off back here on your control screen because you got a little red flashing light right here. So if we release this, you can see that light goes off. Our chain is ready to spin. Put it back on. Our chain is stopped. It tells you that it can't power on. It can't spin the chain because that is activated. Our light here in the middle, the green one, is for our save mode. That's to cut down on your battery consumption. It just spins everything a little bit slower, uses a little bit less power, helps to um, keep your battery um, or make your battery last a little bit longer. Now, you can also see here, speaking of battery, you can tell how much power is in your battery right here on this screen. You don't have to flip the saw up and push the button on the battery itself. You have all your information right there. You also have your, your power button right here, of course. And then up here in the corner, you have another light. And if you look at that closely, that is a Bluetooth logo on there. And yes, this has Bluetooth connectivity in case you missed it on the model number sticker up here. It even indicates it right up there. And what this does is this allows you to connect to the Husqvarna Connect app, not the Automower Connect app, just Husqvarna Connect. And you can access a lot of stuff in there. And we'll get back to that in a couple seconds here. We'll show you all the cool stuff in the app that's available and, and what you can see in there. But we're gonna keep moving on with these other controls here. And this is something new. I don't know if you'll see this on more saws as time goes on because of the way safety regulations um, keep getting more and more strict. But normally what you would do on a chainsaw is you have to push this down before you can squeeze the trigger, right? You can't push that down. You can't squeeze the trigger. What's going on? Well, it's a two-step process with this. And you see the little arrow right there? You have to push this front to release this lock. Then you can push that down. Whoops. So now you can push that down and now you're free to squeeze the trigger. So now you can accelerate the chain and start cutting. But of course you notice nothing's happening because we have our chain brake engaged. So this saw knows that the chain brake is engaged and will flash that red light. So that's all happening electronically like you would see on a lot of battery powered saws out there on the market. But you can hear this when we move this, this chain brake there's an actual click in there. So we'll show you what that's all about because that's a different setup compared to what most people offer on their, their battery powered chainsaws. But anyway, back here to the controls, um, the Bluetooth connectivity. Let's take a look at all the stuff in the app that you can, uh, all the information you can get about your saw and the other stuff there found in this app. When you go to connect your saw to your smart device, you have to make sure that you have your Bluetooth activated. If not, you will get this message here um, asking if it can turn on Bluetooth and you want to allow it. Then once it's on, you want to place your smart device, whether it's a phone or tablet, whatever, um, really close to the piece of equipment. Uh, if you actually lay it on top of the piece of equipment, it works even faster, but uh, it'll, it'll connect pretty quick. This one here, I don't know why. There we go. The uh, light on the saw had actually come on, showing that it was connected, but on the phone it, it hadn't shown it was connected yet. So anyway, once you have it connected, uh, then you just want to tap on the icon for the tool you want to select, and it'll take you in here and it'll show you some information about the tool. Here's our 540 IXP saw. Uh, you can see the battery power is at 12%, total runtime 57 minutes, total use time 71 minutes. 
you get that difference there because the run time is when the chain is actually spinning and it's cutting something. The total use time is just when the power is on. So we've been doing a bunch of recording here for this stuff, showing you how this works. So we've got more, a, a lot more total use than we do run time. Um, then the, uh, the save mode, that there, if we push that button, now you can see we, we turned that on on the saw. And if we hit the button on the saw, that'll go out. Up at the top, you have a couple other uh, categories there. Parts. It's not really the parts for the saw because there's not a whole lot that you would work on with this saw because it's battery powered. And it's just some electrical components in there. But it has, uh, you know, it'll guide you to a lot of these accessories here. Uh, you can see there are batteries, boots, first aid, helmets, jackets, protective glasses, t-shirts. So some PPE stuff and, of course, the batteries. It would be nice if they would add bars and chains and that kind of stuff to this as well just to make it easier to um, to know what you need when you go to get another bar or another chain. You would have that information right there. Then the other one we have, the other tab, is support. And that's going to give you manuals and maintenance tips, troubleshooting. Um, a lot of times this will come up at first. If you haven't picked a dealer already, it will ask you to pick a... Uh, a dealer and if you ignore that and then later on down the road you need to find a dealer you don't know who your local dealer is right there at the bottom find a dealer it'll take you into the dealer locator um, application that they have on their uh, website as well so you can track down all the dealers in your area the uh, the technical specifications I'll show you that here this is everything you would find really on the uh, Husqvarna website about the uh, the 540 IXP saw but it does give you your product number and serial number there, which is handy because a lot of times you'll need that and you won't have the saw around you. Now let's go back here. Um, there's some how-to videos on there, troubleshooting stuff. So plenty of information that can be useful, especially if this is your, your first time working with battery-powered equipment um, and you need to learn what some of these icons are or how to maintain it or you know what's a good way to use it, what's, got, what's not a good way to use it. Um, you know, things like, uh, the temperatures that your batteries should be operating at, you know, you don't want to have them out there and, and, uh, operating at temperatures that are rated below, or I mean, are below what they rate them to be good for. And you want to make sure you know how to maintain the saw, that kind of stuff. So all that information, you can find it all right here in the app. So back here to overview. Um, if you go back the back arrow again here. The plus sign down at the bottom, that's where you would add a new tool. And the T540 IXP and this 540 IXP, they are not the only tools that they have available um, with this Bluetooth connection. They also have some, uh, some new stuff they just came out with. There's a brush cutter, um, and I believe there might be a trimmer now too. I know they're going to be adding more stuff uh, to this the list of uh, Bluetooth connectivity items. As they go forward, uh, it's going to be pro products. You're not going to find that anytime soon, I don't think, on your like 120i chainsaws and stuff like that. But the professional stuff, that way you can keep better track of your run times and know when it's time to service it and maintain it. They also have fleet services, which is a completely different thing from this. And that one there, you actually pay for a subscription. But this um, this Bluetooth app here, it's free. You just download it from Google Play or from the... Uh, the Apple Store or wherever you get your apps from, and uh, it just connects through Bluetooth, so there's no there's no fees there for the connection or anything like that. And so here we have the bar and chain cover. It's actually a metal cover, not plastic. Has side chain tensioning and a single captured bar nut, meaning that when you take this apart to change your bar and chain out in the woods, uh, you're not going to lose that bar nut. It just stays with the cover. It can't come off there unless you physically pry it off there. Uh, you have your, your single stud that your bar nut goes on. And then you have these two posts here, which help keep the bar lined up and keep it from flopping all over the place. Uh, something that most people don't expect to see on a battery-powered chainsaw is when you, when you apply the um, chain brake, there's actually a brake band around here. So it's actually going to apply... A brake band to that sprocket setup, just like on a gas powered saw. And there you can see it released. And there it is on. There's a sight window here on your bar oil, so you can tell how much bar oil you got in there. Ours is uh, pretty full. But um, 
This also has the uh, the new style flip up cap on there, so you don't have to worry about pressure building up and not being able to get the cap off. Real easy to remove when you flip that up, and it is tethered, so your chances of losing that out in the woods are very, very unlikely. So that's a nice feature to have, those flip up caps. And for those of you who don't know, even if this thing would build up some kind of pressure there, you wouldn't be able to get it off, say somebody stripped it out or whatever, there is a spot right there, that's this slot right here. That was designed to be able to put your um, your flat blade end, your screwdriver end, or your scrunch in there, so you can use it to um, take this off if need be, you know, for some odd reason that uh, you weren't be able to turn it by hand. So. With the introduction of the 540 IXP and the T540 IXP came a new cutting system from Husqvarna. You can see this has an X Precision bar on there. Again, this is our 16 inch bar on here and they use a 325 mini chain on here and 43 gauge. Now 325 mini, as you see here in this picture, is smaller than the regular 325 chain that Husqvarna has been using for years. The other big thing that really sticks out with this 325 mini chain that they're using is this gap between the bar and the chain. Take a look at that right there. And then here's a, another picture. Uh, this is a little bit better quality picture. You can see all the daylight shining through there. Uh, that really stuck out to me at first because I thought, well, it's the wrong chain or it's not on there properly, but that's the way it's supposed to be. And, you know, you, you don't really uh, think about it, but it's noticeable. And here, just to show you the difference, this is on our 120i battery-powered chainsaw. You can see there's hardly any gap there between the bar and the chain. And then here's our T540 XP gas-powered saw. There's really no gap at all between the bar and the chain. My guess is that's got something to do with just keeping the bar and the chain cooler. Uh, you know, you're going to get some air generated um, through those gaps there, but you're also going to have less contact between the bar and the chain as far as the, uh, the amount of surface area being contacted all the time. So it's going to cut down on the heat transfer and it's going to give your bar oil a better opportunity to keep everything cool and better lubricated, which in the long run is going to save you money because everything will last longer. So that's definitely a new feature that you don't see on our other equipment. And um, I don't remember them really pointing that out before. You hear a lot about cutting capacity and things like that, but nothing about this new design and the way it rides on the bar. Well, that's going to do it here for our first video, uh, looking at the new Husqvarna 540 IXP battery-powered chainsaw. Hopefully, uh, this one wasn't too boring for you, and you are able to learn some stuff about it. And uh, there's still a lot more to talk about, a lot more that we need to, to you know, kind of explain to you and show you about this saw. So, um, you know, keep checking back. Um, if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our channel. That way you get the notifications when we post a new video. Uh, cause you're not going to want to miss the other ones we have. Um, that's really all I can tell you about it. I don't want to give everything away. So, um, again, be sure to subscribe to our channel and thank you for watching.